Good evening. One of our guests tonight, a scientist, says that we're all doomed in the next 50 years. I'm Joe Pine, and the action starts in just a moment. Thank you very much, and good evening, everybody. We're all set to go. The top of the show, we take our dock, turn it into a beef box. The first beefer is in place. What is your name, please? My name is Coffee Coppender. Yes? You have a beef? Yes, I do. I've been trying to get a SAG agent here in Hollywood, and they all say... Get a what? A Screen Actors Guild agent here in Hollywood, and they all say I'm too big. Well, I, I think they all want these ingenue types. They all want these twiggies, 31, 21, 31 kind of girls. And uh, it just is impossible for me. I've tried diets and massages and gyms. Why don't you try working in the 5 and 10? <laughs> well, they don't demand any particular measurements. It's no. honest work. No, but I want to be before the public because... Well, that would put you before the public. <laughs> Those girls get a lot of attention. Well, not the t kind of attention I want, because I think I have potential as a character actress. Possibly you have. Well, I, people say that I've been in Invitation to Ruin, which um, is not a known movie, but I played the ruin in it. <laughs> and, uh, well, that, that's I all think I'm, I think I'm about to hear a routine. <laughs> The next no. line will be, there's one thing you can say about Kate Smith. She's kept her figure. Well, I mean, when I go to a casting director's office, they always see me as a certain type, as the, um, oh, lady with a whip or just uh, heavy, you know, and I want to play something with a little bit more depth. <laughs> like Lady in the Well, or I'm Sunk. Well, I don't think I could play Juliet in Romeo and Juliet, and I, I don't think that's the right type, but I don't see myself as a, as a b or a biddy or anything like that. I mean. Well, all I can say is I wish you luck with whatever you've got. Thank you. What would you advise me to do? I'll take a long trip on a slow freighter. <laughs> Well, the boat might sink. What happens then? Well, you said you wanted, you said you wanted some deep rolls. You can well, wind up in Davy Jones's locker, you know. I've had a bad, a few bad experiences with with couches that I sat on or chairs. I mean, they seem to give way quite easily, and the boat might too, yeah. unless it was strong. Well, you could always turn communist or something. That'd get get you some attention. I can swim, though. That might save me. You could uh, pick it or something, huh? I float pretty well. <laughs> Isn't there some agent who will come and take this girl off the program? <laughs> now? I don't... Are there? I don't see any here, but... Well, I'll tell you, if you, if you wait Maybe over Maybe I'll there, have a picket sign outside the studio and, and say, Here I am. Take yeah. me away. If you wait over there, there'll be an agent who will come along in about 15 minutes. We're calling him now. Oh, You'll know him. He you. has a white coat. <laughs> And you go with him, huh? A white coat. What yeah. kind of hat does he have? I don't know, but he's got a nice smile, and you go with him. You can trust him. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you going to follow that, pal? <laughs> <laughs> what's your name? Don Ketchum. Don, what's your uh, beef? My beef... Uh... Finally moved to Las Vegas. I think one guy <clears throat> managed to get a line of credit to about uh, 300000 at one of the casinos. And he used up every bit of it in Blue Town. And so everybody thought, well, it was Nick the Greek. He'll pay off. And so finally Nick comes through town and uh, somebody sort of says, well, look, it's been a couple of years. How about paying up? And Nick said, pay up what? 
And so he goes over to the casino, and he said, but you're not Nick the Greek. And it took him a week to prove that he really was Nick the Greek, <laughs> and he hadn't lost any money there at all. Well, that's amazing that a casino would let somebody get into them for that kind of money. Oh, yeah, but a guy with Nick's reputation could easily do so because now, they knew he would pay. Would they raise the limit, uh, the limit for gambling in Las Vegas on just about, uh, well, on, on dice and, and, and blackjack, mm -hmm. the major games, I suppose, roulette, is $500. Would uh, they raise well, it for him? They would raise it in one of two ways. Either they'd set aside a single table <clears throat> where he alone would gamble, and uh, the, the limit, of course, you have to have a lower uh, minimum limit if you're going to make it, say, a $5,000 limit for the uh, uh, top limit for the game, then you've got to come up to, say, a $500 uh, minimum, minimum for right. the game so that you can't do a doubling like a Martingale system or something like that. Or uh, if Nick merely wanted to play the rim, but he wanted to play for large amounts at the same time, there was a gag that several of the casinos had where they would take special chips. Uh, these would be uh, of the various denominations, but they'd have a little uh, stamp on them with the owner's name. And uh, Nick would buy a certain amount of these, and they'd be worth exactly 10 times their face value so that people would think he was dropping, say, a, a $10 bet. And actually, it was a uh, hundred or a uh, hundred dollar bet, and it so was so that a he could he could sit and play at a table where there were other players, and they wouldn't have any yeah. idea w that the the big action was really going on there. And his bets were paid off, of course, in similar uh, chips with the stamp on them. Then he could would cash those separately. <coughs> now he gambled primarily because he he liked the excitement of it. Yes, he said it was uh, something to do with man's fate. What would that's you right. Say in the book? It's it's a way of. Surrendering yourself to the fates before, twist, before testing your nerve and wit and knowledge. And you do this because it improves the flavor of living. He had another <laughs> phrase, the joyful acceptance of risk. And he thought that anyone who didn't have this, who wasn't really having fun at gambling, was an absolute fool to gamble and shouldn't be gambling. He was, in fact, uh, against most people gambling because he thought, A, they didn't know how, and B, it was <coughs> no fun for him. It's amazing how many people don't know how. Oh. I think uh, somebody said the, in Las Vegas that uh, that blackjack is the one game where you can do everything uh, absolutely wrong and win. Yeah. And you can do yeah. everything by the books and lose. And, in fact, the dealer can even show you both his cards and still, still right. win. And I was in uh, Las Vegas recently, and uh, I was sitting in this position at a blackjack table. And as you know, they're in the, in mm -hmm. the strip there's sort of a circle of blackjack tables so that the people are playing all around the, s the circle. And the blackjack dealer who was just opposite me was a man who looked to be about 55 years of age. And uh, in the middle of his deal, he suddenly blanched and apparently had a heart attack hmm. and just crumbled. A woman screamed, and he crumbled. And uh, two guards came over, and they, they looked him over, and he was trying to get up. He was trying to get on his feet, and they wouldn't let him. They brought a wheelchair. They put him in it. It all took about two minutes, and uh, after he fell down and the woman screamed, everybody looked up, and then the game continued as if nothing had happened. Yep. Uh, and the people who did continue after that and who didn't even watch the progress <laughs> of the dealer out of the casino, those are the ones that Nick called the dead ones, the ones who are really, they're, they're so far out of it that they've got no business gambling or doing anything else, really. I'm convinced that a, that a naked woman could march, a beautiful woman oh. could march through a casino and wouldn't be noticed. And they probably have. <laughs> <It's just laughs> we'll be back to Ted Thackeray and uh, this, Gambling Secrets of Nick the Greek, talking about Nick the Greek following these words. From this book, we have some notes. Uh, Nick went from rags to riches, according to Ted Thackeray, and back again. 73 different times. In other words, 73 different times he was all the way up and all the way broke. He estimated that in the course of his lifetime, he won and lost more than $500 million. $500 million. A half a billion dollars. Now, Nick's single biggest winning score was $5 million. Oh, no. No, oh, $50 million. Was it $50 million? $50 million. $50 million. He had a chance to sit and count it and think, well, my goodness. We should have counted. We copied it wrong. I thought $5 million was fantastic, but $50 million. Yeah. yeah, he was $50 million ahead back, I think it was 1929. Now, he once bet, correct me if I'm wrong, 280000 on a single roll of the dice. That's right. 
With he Rothstein. Lost? With what? With Arnold Rothstein. Arnold, Arnold Rothstein, who was married to the funny girl. No, right? no, that's uh, Nicky Arnstein. Oh, Nicky Arnstein. Was, I got uh, it wrong. Yeah. He lost the biggest single poker pot in history. And that amounted to $650,000? And again, it was to Rothstein. Table stakes, <laughs> eh? Again they kept asking him, why so high? And he said, well, it's as far as Arnold wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> he broke the bank at Monte Carlo three times in 11 hours. Uh -huh. And then came back to do it eight more times before the week was up. And according to uh, the press releases for your book, uh, he almost won Egypt from King Farouk's father. He did indeed. What had happened was that old uh, <laughs> Fuad II, who was the Sultan of Egypt, later King of Egypt, uh, had just been married, and uh, people in his country naturally would have been a bit offended if he'd left his new bride and gone to uh, keep the season at Monaco, so he had to go in disguise. That uh, precluded his going into any casino action because he'd be recognized. So he heard of Nick and uh, found that Nick did like large action, and so they had a little private game. And uh, the Sultan was winning at first, and finally, Nick beat him on one busted flush. And he made sure that the Sultan saw that it was a busted flush he'd won, he'd beaten him with. Well, after that, almost anything that Nick had, the Sultan had a bad habit of wanting to see it and paying to see it, and Nick made sure that it was always there. Uh, about a day later, it wound up, uh, Fuad had busted, uh, what portion of the royal treasury he had with him, and for credit, he was wanting to uh, sign a chattel deed on uh, Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> Without even checking with Nasser. That's right. Nick said uh, he wouldn't take the deal, but he uh, <laughs> he thought maybe he should have later because he'd have had to be a better king than Farouk. Wouldn't anybody? Yeah. Here's the book, Gambling Secrets of Nick the Greek. There's the author, Ted Thackeray. I'm Joe Pine. Thank you for watching, and straight ahead. Thank <laughs> you.